and welcome to my vlog Crafting with Shutter Monkey. I am Amanda, also known as Shutter Monkey, and I live in Ayrshire on the west coast of Scotland. This video blog is mostly about knitting, crochet and patchwork and quilting and I'll pop little timestamps down below in the description box so if you're not interested in one of the sections you can just skip by it and get on to another one, okay? Other places that you can find me online are Ravelry, I'm Shutter Monkey Designs on there. I'm also on Love Crafts, Shutter Monkey Designs again. That's where it, Those two places are where I sell all my knitting and my crochet patterns. You can also find me on Payhip, that's where I sell my, my quilting and my sewing patterns. Um, you can also find me on Etsy, I'm Shutter Monkey Designs again. That's where I sell some handmade items that I've made and I've also got fabric for sale on there just now too. And the other places you, you can find me online are Instagram and We Shutter Monkey on there, that's my personal page. And also Facebook, I have a group, Shutter Monkey Designs. Today is Friday the 20th of November and I'll get this edited and uploaded as quick as I can but it may take me a day or two to get it up onto YouTube. I'm not very good at the editing stage. Um, as I said before, I live on the west coast of Scotland, I live in Ayrshire and as of right this second, Scotland's not in a lockdown but later on today at six o'clock tonight, actually we I live in one of the areas that will be moving to level four. Now in Scotland we actually have, a, it's a five level system. I know it's different in England. England's already in lockdown but we aren't in Scotland um, and it's different here than it is in England and I think Ireland and Wales have their own systems as well. But we have a, we have a, five, we have a five level system here in Scotland and level zero being as close to what normal used to be, what normal life used to be like before COVID-19 came along. Not quite normal, but as close to normal, as close to normal as possible. And level four is the highest level of restrictions. Now I think there's just over 30 councils in the whole of Scotland and there's 11 councils moving into level four at six o'clock tonight and we're one of them. After looking on the Scottish government website, I don't think level four is actually lockdown. Maybe that's just my way of reading it all, but I think we can be put, there can be further restrictions put into place and it will be a full lockdown. Maybe that's just, just my way of interpreting it, interpreting it all, that maybe there's still worse to come, so. But level four means that all our local shops, non-essential shops and businesses have to close down. So if you're on a pub, a club, bar, restaurant, you're not selling food, you're not selling medicines, gyms, leisure centres, all that kind of place, all, the, all those kind of places, they're closing down. And um, I think the, school, the schools are still open, mind you. So that's why I'm, and there's not, there are certain travel restrictions being put in place across the whole of Scotland. If you're in a level three or four area, you're not allowed to travel to a level one or two and vice versa, they shouldn't come into a level three or four. Um, but there's not been, we've, in level four, we've been told to stay as close to home as possible. Only go out if you need food, if you need medicine, if you're taking care of other people. You're still allowed to have your extended household. If you've formed an extended household with another house, you're still allowed to travel back and forward between them, even if you're in a different level from them. And so, as I say, that's why I think it's not full lockdown. Not that that matters if you're running a local business and you have to close down a few weeks before Christmas still the same to you, isn't it? Whether it's level four or lockdown. But anyway, that's the situation here, the way it is just now. It's different across the whole of Scotland and they're monitoring it weekly. But as far as I'm aware, the 11 councils that are moving into level four, we'll be there for three weeks. It'll be like that for the next three weeks. So quite tight restrictions for us for the next three weeks, but we'll see how it is after that. Anyway, what have I got to share with you today? Sorry if I'm crinkling, I've got a wee bit of paper here with everything written down. Um, will we start with, oh no, no, I was wondering if anybody could use this. Um, it's got wee else printed on it. Fold it back up a wee bit and maybe try and show you it a bit better. Fold it up. It's an oil cloth. I actually bought it to make bags. I bought it online a couple of years ago. Thought it was fabric, but it's actually an oil cloth. And it's really, really nice. It's to see if you've got wee ones and they maybe get involved in a lot of messy play and you want something to protect your tabletop. You can maybe use this over Christmas or even you can make bags with it yourself, couldn't you? 
if you want it just write elf oil cloth and the first person that leaves a wee comment for that i'll send that out to you okay i'll need to get in touch with you and get your address off you but but it's looking for a new home so knitting again socks first okay right this is the Fanko sock pattern. I didn't release this last week. A couple of the test knitters, I was waiting for them to finish off the pattern. Um, and I think it came out a quite quite big in a few of the test knitters, but it has come out slightly wider around the leg, bigger round here. Um, but I'm going to publish it this week. Okay, I'll get that done. The stitch count in these socks increases from 64 after doing the cuff up to 80. It's to take into account you've got these wee these wee cables down here. Cables tend to tighten up your tighten up your knitting. But maybe it's something to keep in mind while you're knitting it. I've put the gauge that you should achieve for the pattern section and for stocking stitch into the pattern. So maybe just check that before you do, because you don't want to spend all that time knitting socks and they end up too big for you. But it's something maybe you could check. Or maybe you don't mind your socks being a wee bit a wee bit looser around the leg. Or I suppose maybe even what you could do is you could just knit the pattern on the front and have stock and stitch in the back. That would tighten it all up a wee bit as well. Okay, just something to keep in mind. And this one is currently being test knitted just now. That's okay. Nobody's found any problems with that. Anything that there's maybe been a couple of wee errors. One wee error actually. And that's been sorted. So these are ready to go. I'm going to be using these later on. Um, at the start of the advent, I'm going to knit my Christmas socks with these. So that's coming soon. It'll be out in the next week. Probably Monday or Tuesday I'll get them published. And also this one too. This one's been great. See the photographs, some of the photographs of this one. I don't know if it's just because it's Christmas and we all need something to look forward to. But the photographs of this one that I've received and people have did contrast in heel toes and cuffs and maybe a cream coloured sock with the green and the the green and the red cuffs and toes, oh, it's, they've been lovely. These ones have been lovely too, sorry if you've been testing it and that and I seem like I'm going and going over the other one, they're all lovely. Whenever I get a, a photograph through from a test knitter, they, they send you a wee progress photo. I just love it, it does, it brings a wee bit of joy into my day. Even when they've got a question or a query or there's a problem and then they still attach a photo, I'm still like, oh, I love that, that's my pattern, that idea came out of my wee head. So those are ready to go. And they'll be published. That's three patterns I'm going to be publishing early on next week, okay? And the next request is for the Feather and Fan Sock. I'm going to be looking for test knitters for this one. So if anybody would like to do that, I'll, again, I'll pop details below. But I think this one will be the last pattern that I'm going to look for test knitters this year. Got some sock blockers. I'm going to pop these on a sock blocker while I'm talking. These are socks that I haven't shared with you yet, actually, so you can give me an opinion on these. Right, this first one. Now, I'm not sure how well you'll see this. I always say that, and then I look at it on the, on the big screen and it looks okay. But um, what I'm wondering, I'm going to tuck that wee end in. I've not sewn my ends in yet. I never do that to the very end of the last minute. I'm wondering if you can see love hearts on this. So... It's supposed to be a love heart design with a little bead, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it just looks like zigzags. I'm wondering if maybe if I knitted it on a plain yarn, maybe the the pattern and the maybe the pattern and the the striping and the yarn, the colour in the yarn is competing too much. I do love this yarn though, so it would get used for something else anyway. This is um, Dreams of Sugar Plums from Mr B Yarns, and I bought this last Christmas. Um, but I do like it. But the idea was to have a nice Valentine themed sock with love hearts on it. And as I say, I don't know if it's shown up very well. Don't know if you can see that or whether you're just getting zigzags. And it was a wee bit adventurous putting the beads in because it's got sparkle on it too. I love a bit of bling. Anyway, you can let me know what you think of that one. But that one will be coming out after Christmas. And this is the other one that I haven't shared with you yet. Just pop it on the sock blocker. You think I would have all this ready to go, wouldn't you, before I started? I would all morning to get ready. But here we go. This is going to be my yellow brick road socks. It's got a nice wee brick pattern on it. And this one's different from other ones. It's actually got a slip stitch cuff to it too. I tried to add something a wee bit more interesting to this cuff because this will be a paid for pattern. 
rather than again it just being a, a twisted rib cuff like my, my three patterns are try something I thought would try something a wee bit different but you can let me know what you think of those two what your opinions are in those if you think I need to work a wee bit more in this I think this one's okay that one's just a bit good to go but this one might need a wee bit more work and as I say maybe just a plain yarn maybe it's just the, the, the colour and the yarn and the pattern are competing with one another I'll be interested to see what this looks like when I get it onto a, a bigger screen because you're quite far away from me currently I have three patterns on Ravelry and Lovecrafts just now three sock patterns You've seen these before and I promise this will be the last time I show you these, okay? So there's the old shade ones. There's Helter Skelter. Steel Ach. They've all got shawl patterns that match. The Helter Skelter is the squish pattern. And I'm, in the next week I'm going to be publishing the Fanko socks. The Chevron socks. And I'll also publish these ones too. Okay, the candy cane ones, they're all free patterns. Okay, so by this time next week, there will be six free patterns on Ravelry. So what I'm going to do today is launch a little knit along, a sock knit along. All you have to do is knit a pair of socks and share, share your progress, share your pictures on, on social media, whether that's Ravelry, Instagram, or even on Facebook, okay? And just put there... Just use the hashtag ShutterMonkey knit along. I'll pop that here along the screen so you can, so you know exactly what to put on. And then that way I'll be able to look on social media and see who's knitting the socks. I'm going to run this up until the middle of January, okay? And there's a couple of prizes that I'm going to put up. Right, so this is a little bag that I made. It's got love hearts inside. And it's made using Emma Bridgewater fabric. It's got a boxy bottom. And it's got a zip closure. Okay. Now this is the bigger bag. This is a bigger bag. So I'll give this away to whoever wins first prize. Okay. It's got a little handle here. You can take that handle off if you want. That's good for putting your stitch markers on as well. You can put it on that little D-ring there. And I'm also going to put in a couple of needle DPN cozies as well. Okay. For knitting socks. Now I know it's not even Christmas yet. And I'm showing you love theme stuff. But see by the time... The middle of January comes round and I'm drawing winners. These bags will be coming out to you just in time for doing your Valentine knitting. Okay, that's why I'm putting these up. So I'm going to pop these inside here. Make sure. Yep. And then I've also got a smaller bag too. Okay. Oh, throwing it away. And again, this one's actually got little flowers in the inside. Both of these bags have been interfaced, so they're a wee bit sturdier. And again, boxy bottom. And it has the D-ring at the side with a detachable handle if you want to take the handle off. And I have put my wee logo inside as well. Both of them have got that. Did I show you the inside of that one? Okay. And again, I'll put a couple of DPN cozies in. I'll put a grey one that matches and I'll put the... Oh, I'm dropping everything. Butter fingers. Um, and I'll put the two DPN cozies in. The DPN cozies, I experimented with these a little bit as I was making them. Some of them had interfacing as I made them and some of them didn't. I was trying to find what I liked because this fabric is quite a thick fabric. The outer fabric, it's um, cotton duck fabric. It's a wee bit heavier weight than the regular quilting cotton that I would normally use. But they're still good. I've been using these, these myself and they still work as needle cozies. So anyway, that I'll pop these inside that one. But that's two wee prizes, so if you want to take part in that knit along, it'll be running up to... Right, I'm going to say about the 10th of January just now. I'll give you a proper date next time, okay? I should have looked at that before I come on. But there's two wee prizes there. So if you can manage to finish one of my free sock patterns before the middle of January, use the hashtag ShutterMonkeyKnitAlong and you'll be in with a chance of winning one of these two bag sets. Okay? Right, what am I moving on to next? other knitting things. I've got another wee giveaway that I wanted to do. Over the past over the past few weeks I've been cleaning out my room a wee bit. These cupboards that you can see behind you, I've got six of these double cupboards and I've been cleaning out and trying to rearrange stuff so you've got maybe a cupboard for crochet, a cupboard for quilting, one of the cupboards for your knitting stuff and I've been coming across stuff that I forgot I had, that stuff that I made quite a while ago and I was wondering if anybody could use this yarn. I'm going, to sh I'm going to take it out and I'll show you it. 
but it's in a plastic bag so you can leave it in the bag when it comes to you leave it in there for as long as you like obviously current situation maybe some people are worried about that kind of thing right and I'm going to tell you what's in how much yarn I've got each one it's all of this is Louisa Harden Willow Tweed and it's a double knitting yarn but when I was knitting with it it's um, double stranded because I doubled it up we needed to have two strands of yarn it was a bag that I actually made so these are the leftovers from my bag but I've had them for years and I've never turned them into anything and what I was wondering the log cabin blankets seem to be really popular just now you could maybe try a, a log cabin blanket with these couldn't you so there's a pale grey colourway and there's also a dark grey colourway oh sorry these are falling apart I'll tidy them up if you want me to skein them up for you I can do that before I send them out but most of them are double stranded right let me just wind this back up tidy it up for you so there's the pale grey and there's a darker grey as well now the pale grey one there is 30 grams of that it's, it's a good weight of yarn isn't it double knitting and the dark grey there's 20 grams I'm just going to pop these back in the bag as I'm showing you them and then that way they're not going to roll about the floor there's purple as well there's 31 grams of purple I've got this pinky red colour and there's 23 grams of that there's the green colour and I've got 26 grams of that and there's a little tiny bit of blue now there's not much of the blue um, but you might even get the centre of a log cabin squared if you were going to do log cabins with them you might get one centre because there's only one and a half grams of that there but I'm going to put it all in and if somebody can use that they are more than welcome to it so if you just let me know say um, what will I get you to say Louisa Hart just say Willow Tweed Willow Tweed that will do Say that in your comment then I'll know that you want to try and win this yarn and I'm also going to put in there's a couple of wee bits of the Louisa Harden Sari ribbon this is lovely um, it's like a ribbon I'm going to pull some of it apart so you can see it Oop, made a big mess here but it is it's just like ribbon and it's really pretty this one changes colours this one's actually very autumnal the kind of gold in the the oranges through it and the, a wee bit of go, golden it's kind of yellow and golden bronze and but it's nice and it knits up quite nicely too so there's a wee bit of that in the yellow the kind of autumnal colours and then there's a pinky there's a pinky purple colourway too so if anybody would like that let me know there's 17 grams of the, that one here the sari ribbon and there's only 5 grams of the wee pink purple so if anybody wants that let me know and I'm going to pop another wee needle cosy in okay let's get wee flowers wee flowers on the inside too some people knit them on knit their blankets on thicker DPNs I know I did when I did my my log cabin in my courthouse steps it was on DPNs so you can keep them keep your project on a wee DPN cosy so if you want that let me know just say willow tweed in your comment and if you want that and you want the oil cloth Put both the comments on okay if you leave the specific comments that i'm telling you to leave that way i know that you actually want to win something because some people just some people just leave comments and they don't want to win anything so i'll pop this down here with oil cloth out the way right what else have i got to show you knitting wise today um i have oh the most exciting thing actually it's in my wee bag i made a wee bag for this specially I'm saying this is exciting. I'm going to show you a paper bag. This is my 24 stripe Advent skein of yarn from the Cozy Knitter. She's a Canadian yarn dyer. And I saw Sandy by the Lakeside knitting this last year and I thought, wow, that's amazing. One wee there's 24 different stripes in this and you just knit one a day over Advent. But so I'll do both socks at the same time. So there's two 50 gram skeins in here. And there's also a little contrasting um, mini to do the heel toes and cuffs and I bought the, the one with the gold stellina through it so I'm going to have to open it up a day early oh dearie me it does say no peeking on it but um, I'm going to open this a day early I'll open it in St Andrew's Day that's the 30th of November here so I can knit my cuff and be ready to go but when I do this I'm going to I'm going to knit this pattern up 
I don't want in it anything that's too patterned and it'll compete with the, the stripes and the yarn. So I think I'll do the chevron just to add my chevron. I'll use my chevron pattern just to add a wee bit of interest to it. But I'm quite looking forward to that. And I've got my little needle cozies ready as well. I've got one with the cats on and I've got one with the Christmas lights on. So I'll know which, which sock. Like you're going to not know which sock is sock one and sock two. You knit one stripe on each every day. It'll be easy to know which one, you're, which one is sock one and sock two. But... I've made two different needle cozies anyway and that's my wee bag, do you remember the, the catitude cat panel I showed last time? Well I just cut two of the panels off I picked my two favourite cats that one reminds me of my girl cat and that one reminds me of my boy cat so I'm not, my boy cat's no longer with us, we lost him last year, he passed away last year but so that's my bag and it's just got the little cats on the inside can you see that okay? Maybe I should turn it inside out. There we go. It's just got the cats on the inside. And I use the Christmas lights for the for the cord. No pockets or anything on the inside. And I just put a little bit of the Christmas lights on the bottom so I could box up the bottom of the panels. But that's it. So I'm quite looking forward to starting that. Quite looking forward to opening it just and seeing which colours are inside. But there we go. So that's me. My advent knitting is all ready to go. I'm really looking forward to opening this and seeing which colour, seeing what colours are in that, those stripes. So I'm going to pop this out of the way just now. So the other thing that I've been knitting on recently, I've spent a lot of time working on this actually, just sitting watching The Crown. Have you been watching that on Netflix? It's really good, wasn't it? So. This is, this is a wee head. She's a wee hedgehog. And I sat and stuffed her last night. And that's her body. So. And then she's getting these big long legs. Two legs. Two legs. Oh, can you see her? So, well, I think one of her legs is back to front. I wouldn't sew them on like that, I promise. She'll have them on the proper way. Okay, and I've got her arms done as well, but I still have to sew them together and stuff them. They need seamed and... But this is Holly the Hedgehog. And when I was doing the head, it's not a difficult pattern to follow, but you cast on so many stitches and then have to cast them back off. And if you lose count, you end up with too many stitches in your row, so you have to concentrate a wee bit on it. And I had to rip it out a couple of times the head, so... When it came to the body and I thought, oh my goodness, look at all these spikes on the body. I found that a wee bit daunting and I thought I'm not going to finish this so what I did was I just did 10 rows a day and that was me so it's finished now, all stuffed, just need to put her together and she's got wee clothes you have to make for her too but I'll show you the book she's from it's from this book here Knitted Animal Friends now the reason I bought this book, somebody showed it on the, the Luna Lappin group on Facebook and they said that the animals worked out roughly the same size as Luna Lappin and her friends so there's lots of clothes patterns to knit in here and I thought, hmm, I could knit lots of stuff for my, for my Luna toys as well but when I saw the, the hedgehog pattern, I just loved her show you inside here are some of the animals there oh, the light's shining on that, I'll try and angle it little outfits and when I, I bought this I bought this last year and I bought the pattern I bought the yarn to knit the hedgehog but I decided that my hedgehog would wear this wee outfit here the, wee, the outfit that the mouse is wearing but I've changed my mind since knitting the hedgehog and she's getting her proper dress because after knitting all those spikes I'm not putting clothes on her and you can't see them so the hedgehog actually comes with a little backless dress. I'm just trying to find her. Yeah, so that's the up there. She's got a little backless dress up there. That's what she'll be wearing, but she's having a nice deep pink colour. Because after spending all that time knitting this hedgehog and knitting all the spikes, this is Holly. I'm not covering up all those spikes with clothes. I did make a start on the wee cardigan. Here we go. That's the wee cardigan there. And I'll see if it fits Luna, Luna or one of her friends. Because um, I've got the yarn there now, so I may as well use it up. But I knitted it 
and I got right down to the bottom section. You start at the top and you come down to the bottom and it tells you to change back to three millimetre needles. And I'm thinking, hmm, it didn't tell you to change to another needle at the start, did it? Yeah, it did. So I've knitted the whole thing in the wrong needles and I checked my tension and it's slightly small, but it might fit one of my Luna toys. And I'm going to knit a dress for her anyway, so that doesn't really matter. But oh, just love all those wee spikes. Now that they're finished, I love all those wee spikes. But I had to concentrate because if you get lost count, you end up with too many stitches. You do your purl row, the next row is a purl row and you do it and you're like, oh, but I've not got the right stitch count. But it's a fun book. Have a wee look online and find that online. It's Knitted Animal Friends by Louise Crowther. But it's quite a nice book if you like that kind of thing, if you like knitting toys. The only other thing that I've been knitting on is a northeasterly blanket. Now this has been kicking about for a couple of years, this pattern, isn't it? It's um, by Ellie of is it Skinanigans. But she had it on sale a couple of weeks ago. And I'm not a fan of scrappy stuff. I can't do scrappy. I need colour order. I need to plan things out and I need to know what it's going to look like. And the thing is, other people do scrappy blankets and I love them, whether they're crochet, whether they're knitted, even patchwork ones. But I need to have colour order. When I first started a patchwork in quilting class, we had to make a wee, just a wee block. It was maybe about 18 inch square, but it was random. We all had to take in two and a half inch squares and we swapped them. And then the teacher went round the class and we had to take one out at a time. And we had to sew it to the next one. And she caught me cheating, she caught me swapping my, the order of mine about because I couldn't do random. Just went, just goes against everything that I normally do. So I get told off that day. Anyway. It turned out lovely. The thing that we finished making, it turned out lovely and I turned it into a wee quilt for my cat. So it wasn't too bad. But anyway, I've been working on... I saw somebody was doing this. I think it's So Sweet Violet's doing a rainbow version. And the minute she said rainbow version, I was like, oh, I could do that pattern. I could do a rainbow version of that. So totally different from her one. She's doing lovely pastel colours and it gradiates up the way. If you've not seen it, go watch her vlog. It's lovely. But this is mine. Now I've not done it proper rainbow colours, traditional rainbow colours. I've slightly changed them because I'm getting a wee bit fed up looking at rainbows to be honest. Oh, maybe shouldn't you say that. But I'm going to show you in the quilting section. I've done a lot of rainbow projects in the past year. But here we go. I'll just pop it out this wee needle cosy. I've actually got it still split over two needles and folded it over so I don't stretch the stitches. And then it's going to change into it. one of these colours at the very top and I'm not sure which one to use but the top of the blanket will be one of these two colours. Now these wee mini skeins, these are great. These come from a company called We County Yarns and it's Shetland wool. It comes off the cone and she winds it into these little, is it 10 grams? 10 gram mini balls. They're only £1.20 and I've bought the colours that I needed and I'm hoping that I can get three of each, the chevron, the chevron shapes on my blanket. I'm hoping I can get three of each colour. So that'll be almost three strips in my blanket from each wee ball. Which means you're not buying a lot of yarn all at the one time. You can just buy, that might last me, well it'll last me to after Christmas anyway, won't it? And if they're only £1.20, it's not a lot of money to invest in. And you can buy more as you need it. And it's not a lot of money to invest in a blanket. And then you don't finish it. So I quite like that idea. That's orange. And the purple's obviously still attached because I've not finished working on my purple. But that's the wee tag there. That's Claire's wee... Can you see that ball band? It's um, Wee County Yarns, she's called. And also, um, there's a, a yarn shop quite local to me called Fanco. The same as my socks. Um, Fanco. And she's selling these little mini kits. She's got them on Instagram just now. She's put pictures on and it's a mitten kit. You know, a little mitten kit. Now, she has to close today because the restrictions have been put into place. But she's still selling them online and she would help you pick colours online if you wanted to pick some different colours for your little advent mitten kit. Something else to keep in mind. This yarn, actually, I think it's still got lanolin in it. Um, I'm just going to move it up as I'm talking, okay? Um, it's still got lanolin in it, which which I don't have a problem with. It smells a wee bit. It smells a bit funny. So if you're not used to that, it might come through and you go, oh, why is that? Why does that smell like that? But 
I like knitting with it. My hands feel lovely afterwards. Really, really moisturises your hands, especially in this colder weather when your hands get dry. And um, it'll see when you wash that out, it'll bloom beautifully. This blanket's going to be lovely. So if you think it's a wee, you can see through it, it won't be like that once I wash the lanolin out. I've worked with this yarn before and it's it's lovely to work with. Can I go higher up? There we go. But I've got a wee plan of the blanket. I'll, I'll lead it all out on the computer because I have to be organised. I just can't do random. Right, here it is. This is my plan. See if I turn it that way. So that's my plan for my blanket. Now the dark bit, the dark bit at the bottom here, that's the navy. So each time that I knit it, there'll be more navy on the bottom to shove it all up a wee bit. And as I say, I don't know whether what colour to use at the top. I've still not decided yet. But even though it's not traditional rainbow colours, I'm still making a rainbow blanket with it. And I quite like that. Um, I think it's going to work out about 60 inches by 72. So it'll be a decent sized blanket. But it might take me three years to work on it. Which is fine. I'm finding a lot of joy in just sitting knitting this just now. While I was watching The Crown as well. Um, so between that and my wee hedgehog, that's mostly what I've been doing. I haven't touched a sock in weeks. But it's lovely, isn't it? But as I say, I'm hoping I'll get three strips from each of these wee colourways because I've only used about three grams of yarn, I think, maybe three and a half. So I'm hoping to get three, three strips before I have to buy any more yarn. But it's quite nice, isn't it? Right, so I think that's me finished for the knitting section. I'm just going to check. Yep, 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 right. Okay, I'm just going to roll this back up and then we can move on to... I've not rolled this very neatly. It would have been nice if I rolled it neatly and I could have showed you how it looks, but it's really nice when you roll them up. Right, I'm going to pop this out of the way. Oh, see that giveaway yarn? See the giveaway yarn? I had it stored in a bowl. When I was tidying out, I found this wee bowl. It's going to need a wash. It's been sitting in a cupboard, which is such a waste because it's a nice, Edin I think it's Edinburgh Crystal. But there's, this is where all my old inch tapes go when they don't work anymore. And this wee one, I need to buy another inch tape for inside here because I bought that one in New York, the wee, the wee turtle. And then these wee mini socks, look at those. That was the first sock I ever knitted. I wasn't a big fan of socks. I thought, imagine spending all that money in a lovely skein of yarn and then knitting it up and putting it on your feet. A fellow knitter knitted me a pair of socks and that was me hooked. Once I realised how toasty and cosy they were. Can you see through there? There's a wee hole there where I've picked up my stitches and my gusset. But there's a hole both sides. I can see daylight through there. It's like when you look through my ears, I can see daylight through that too. But obviously I never picked up my, my gusset stitches properly because I've got a hole. Anyway, just thought I would show you that since I had it out anyway. Now I'm ready to move on to the, the crochet section. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to show you is my little birdies. Remember I made this one, the ugly duckling? Well, I've got another two. I've got the partridge and I've got the turtle dove. That is four geese alone, three French hens, two turtle doves. It is, it's a turtle dove. Couldn't remember the order they came in there. I'm trying to remember the song. So these are two new additions. I think I shared these on Instagram last week. But I need to get little bits of ribbon so I can hang them on the tree on my tree. So there we go. Got three so far. I need to get the crochet hooks out and get on with these. Because I've still got another nine. Well, eight and a bit to do. I did start the French hen. But all I've got is her body done so far. So I need to get on with those. But the other thing I've got to share with you, crochet wise, is actually a kit. This is the Toft Advent Kit. Now, I'm just going to show it like this just now. And I'm about to open this. So if you've bought this kit and you don't want to see inside, look away now. Okay, because I'm about to open this. That's how it arrived in the wrapping paper. And here we go. I'll just pop that down there. So this is the box that it comes in. The lights are shining on it, sorry. And then inside, I'm not going to say the colours in case there's somebody watching that doesn't want to know the colours. So this is what's inside. This is a limited edition colourway. 
and this one is limited edition too. Okay, a wee bit of blind to that one. So we have three balls of this. And there's a few down the bottom, different colourways. We don't know what we don't know what it's going to turn into. You get a piece of the pattern emailed to you every day over Advent and you work on it. I've did, I've taken part in the Toff Crochet for the past three years and I've loved doing it. I love every minute of it. Even if you get to the end and you don't like the animal or whatever you've made, I still like taking part. There's also that. Just show you. I don't want to say what it is in case somebody's trying to look, keep looking away. But this has caused quite a wee bit of kerfuffle on social media, this box, over the past week. When this box went in sale in, in July, it was about three and a half months ago, it was priced at £90. And we were told we would get a certain weight of yarn. And the boxes come through and it's 50 grams short. Which has upset quite a lot of people, quite rightly so. And they've emailed Kerry and told her. And she went on to Instagram on Tuesday and she issued a reason she issued an apology and said, sorry, we didn't we forgot we'd actually published how much yarn you were supposed to be getting. But the design has changed. Um last year's advent was only £50 and we made two little animals. This one has jumped up to 90. And I think most people thought, well, the increase in yarn justifies the costs. I mean, it's a difficult year for everybody, isn't it? It's not just small businesses. You know, I love Toft. I take their stuff to shows when I'm at shows with SWI. I take stuff there to my craft groups, to my classes. And I like to think that I've created a few, a few more Toft fans out there in the world. I don't think I'll be doing that anymore. And I know it's only 50 grams of yarn, but it's the customer service that I don't agree with. So, anyway... We've only got a couple of smaller supermarkets in my town. I live in Stewarton in East Ayrshire and, um, and it's S-T-E-W-A-R-T-O-N, Stewarton. I think when the, the subtitles come up, if anybody uses subtitles, it says Stratton. It's Stewarton, maybe doesn't understand my Scottish accent. But we're getting an Aldi's open here next week. Very exciting. Well, I think so. We have got another couple of smaller supermarkets. We've got um, Sainsbury's and we've got a co-op, but they're quite small. So the Aldi's, I think, will be bigger and it'll be quite handy. You don't have to travel to Kilmarnock to go and get your shopping. It'll be quite handy if we do get, well, there's enough restrictions in place already, but if we get further restrictions and go into a full lockdown, it'll just be really handy. Right, before I move on to the next section, because I've moaned enough about my crochet today, haven't I? I've got a wee giveaway. If you would like this yarn, you would be doing me a big favour if you would take it off my hands because it's just cluttering up my room. Okay, so there's four skeins here. It's Stylecraft Special Iron. And if you want it, just write Stylecraft Special Iron as a comment. Okay, and I'll know you want it and I'll do a wee prize draw next time. But as I say, you have to say whatever I'm telling you, whatever words I'm telling you, if it was the Willow Tweed for the other, week, the other yarn. This one, Stylecraft Special Iron. So I know you want it because some people leave a comment, as I said, and they don't want they don't want to be entered into giveaways, okay? So, and if you come up with something really creative, you can get all the special words in a sentence. Maybe I'll give you a double chance of winning something. Right, anyway, I'm going to put all this away and I'm going to get ready for the, the, the next section. Patchwork and quilting. So over the past week, yeah, since last weekend, I've been working on these. I haven't touched it during the week. I've just been knitting and watching TV and crocheting a wee bit. Um... But I've been making my Christmas tree, my, Chris, my Christmas bobble blocks. And I'll just hold these up. This is a pattern by Thimble Blossoms. And this fabric is by Anila Hoey. I'm not going to show you them all because some of them, there's two of each, okay? Now what I have to do now is cut some white fabric and I've got to make them more bobble shaped. And... And then I've got to put, you know, the wee silver bit that's on top of a Christmas bobble that you put your string on to hang for the tree. Then I've got to put that th those on as well and I can start putting them together. But I'm really liking how this is turning out. I've not made a start on the, the dinosaur quilt that I was making. I decided that it was silly working in three quilts at one time because I wouldn't get much done. And I thought, concentrate on your Christmas quilt, get that done for Christmas. And then we'll move on to something else. Because I know what I'm like. I end up all over the place. And I get nothing finished. 
think there's two of them, they're exactly the same. But I've got 20, 20 blocks there and a little pinwheel one. And then there's a couple of plain blocks that are just um, just big, bigger blocks. So they still get squared, they still get cornered off and the wee bobble attachment thing put on the top. But I've really enjoyed working on that. Just show you the pattern again. So it's Vintage Holiday 2 by Dimble Blossoms and I really like her patterns. If you're in the UK, she used to sell PDFs but there was a big change a couple of years ago in how the digital downloads and, and if you live in the UK now you have to buy a paper pattern but she ships them out pretty quickly and her shipping is very reasonable as well. She's not going to charge you $20 for a, a $5 pattern, put it that way. And she is pretty quick at getting them out to you too. If it's something you, you might not have time to get in time for this Christmas. Especially the way the post is, they're really busy just now, aren't they? But I've really enjoyed working on that. And I just thought I'd show you a wee update. I'm hoping to get them bobbled off this weekend. And then maybe next weekend I can start putting it all together. But... So that was that. Um, I made my bag as well, you saw that earlier. Made my bag, you saw that in the knitting section, so I'm not going to bore you with it twice, okay? And I've also... I want to give this away. I'm not going to finish this. So see if anybody can use that and they can turn that into a cushion or a bag. Whatever you like. Leave me, say Christmas tree, and I'll know. You don't have to say anything else, just Christmas tree. Send me the other ones, just leave the couple of words that I'm asking you, but I'm not going to finish it, it's a shame for it just to get put in, into a box. Okay, so there you go. I've got a few wee giveaways, can you tell I'm cleaning out? It's a shame these things just get stuck in a cupboard and don't get used. Right, what else do I have to show you patchwork and quilt mice? I checked the, the hashtag for the quilt along this morning and I didn't see that anybody else is making this so I haven't, and nobody asked me for the snowman pattern so I haven't published that yet but if you want it let me know and I will, I will publish it, I'll put the pattern onto Payhip and the next one I was going to publish was this one it's a wee bit smaller but this is a Christmas tree as well and it's just got wee red berries we, sorry, we did love hearts in the middle just to jangle it up a wee bit, just to bling it up a wee bit, sorry, that's the word. Okay, you make triangles with this and you fold them over, it's, it's almost a wee bit like origami. Now there's a way you can do it that these pieces here are slightly more 3D, but I didn't do it like that. It was SWI that showed me how to do this. I was at the Craft for Christmas Fair in Glasgow and somebody was making these at a stall and she showed me how to make them. Um, so it's slightly different from the other one that you see in the magazines because those ones are more 3D and they stand out more but this one's flatter so I'm going to be publishing that on Payhip and I'll get that up there before the 1st of December if you want to try and have another try at a Christmas tree slightly different from the other patchwork one isn't it? Okay, I mentioned earlier on that I'd been making rainbow quilts quite a lot last year well I'm going to show you some of the quilts that we made last year so one of them's in here this one's called, oh, I'm tripping over something. So I'll show you this one first. I'll show you this one first. This is a trip around the world. And we made this at a workshop um, last, I think it was June last year, because the workshop that I ran in July was the 25th of July, and it was a Christmas tree cushion. And that was the warmest day of the year last year. And I had 12 ladies sitting in a small room in a community centre, slogging away, making Christmas tree cushions, sweat lashing off them on the warmest day of the year. But this was the one, I think this was June. And that was the trip around the world. We did that using jelly roll strips. And that's um, the backing fabric and this one is in... Um, oh, you see this? This is one of those Catitude fabrics. So that's Catitude as well. But they do, they do a own Christmas range too, and that's what this is. But quite enjoyed making that one. Bit of a challenge trying to make sure you got all the rainbow colours, because I've made trip around the world before, but I haven't had it in a particular colour order like that. So that was fun doing that. And the other rainbow project that we did was this. This was August workshop. I'm just going to tuck her in. She doesn't want your muffin talking at the back, right? 
There we go. Rainbow dressed in cushion. And at the back, there's a wee pot of gold. A wee skinkly pot of gold. Sequined glittery, if you don't know what skinkly means. Sorry, that's my west of Scotland coming out in me. But that was another rainbow project. That was another rainbow project that we made. I like doing that one. A wee bit more challenging. When I run my classes in Presswick, the, the ladies come along once a fortnight. I've got three different classes that I run and three different groups of ladies that come along. And they come along to a total of 13 classes. There's usually, I think it's 13. Yeah, there's seven before Christmas, between September and Christmas, and then there's another six between January and the end of March. And they were working on this. It was a rainbow sampler they were working on. So I'll just stand up and I'll show you this one. These quilts have been sitting, this one here has been sitting in my bag since I finished teaching the class in March and it's not been out yet. And I thought, right, as I'm cleaning out, I'm like, these bags need to come out for under my table now. I should really be using these quilts, shouldn't I? So here we go. So there we go, that's it. That's all of those. And again, I've got cats on the back. It's little constellation cats, this one. And right in the middle, I'm just going to sit back down again. And right in the middle in my Dresden, I've got a wee cat in there. Is he the right way up? I was when I was finishing off the design for this quilt, that's when we lost my boy. That's when we lost our boy cat. So that's why he's in the middle. Mind you, he liked pink and he, he always stole the food out of the pink bowl that was for Rowan. And he liked the pink glittery harness when he was out in the garden. So they maybe made him pink. But anyway, that's that quilt. Just thought I would show it off while I was here anyway. But I love that fabric on the back, the constellation cats. I'm just going to kind of dump this. Maybe you won't see it. <clears throat> I, made this, I made this quilt here. I made the rainbow one before class so everybody knew what they were making but as the classes are progressing you still need to make sure that you know what you're doing and I made a second quilt so this is the second one here that this one the that one there was um Kona cotton just eight different colours I know there's only seven colours in a rainbow but to make the pattern repeats work and especially on the dress then I needed eight colours so I've got two different colours of the violet. I've got a light violet and a dark violet to make it work. But when I made the second one that I was making along, making at the same time as the ladies, I made it using this Laura Ashley fabric, just trying to make sure it's up the right way. Before I stand up. So there we go. Oh, sorry. Right, that way. There we go. What have I done with it? Lost my dressing for the centre. As you can see, I've still not put my dressing on the centre. So she's to go on and I've got Maleficent right in the middle because I love her. And the backing fabric on this one is some swans, some Laura Ashley swans. Now this one's all quilted and it's been bound as well. And then I put my dressings on right at the last minute. So I'll attach my Dresden, it'll go right in here and I'll stitch that down and I usually put my Dresdens on after I've quilted and then that way you're not quilting through your Dresdens. Everybody's different how they do it but I need to get that attached on and then I can use that. I've just got two more things to show you and then you can go or you can go now if you like, I'm not going to make you stay. Right, this one, I'll show you it first okay. And the back looks like this. So 
sorry, I was just grabbing the next one. This one is actually, this one was actually a free pattern on Moda Bake Shop. And it's called Wish Upon a Star. And it was lovely. I actually made this for a, an SWI, my, my institute Pearson, when they entered the Federation show. This was maybe about four years ago. And the theme of that show was a child's playroom. So I made a quilt for it. And it's the first time I had ever um, free motion quilted. And people told me, it'll be fine, it'll be fine, just practice on a little bit. So I did that and it was fine. But see when you go from a little thing that's a cushion size, maybe like the size of my Christmas tree panel, and then you go to a quilt that size, it doesn't move the same way. And nobody told me that. But anyway, it went into the show and it scored 19 and a half out of 20, which I was really, really pleased with. Because there's at least three faults that I can see in the quilts. So I don't know which one the judges picked up on. <laughs> but this is a sweet water fabric that I used for mine. I can see cat hair on this. I think it's the light shining from this side onto me. I hope you can see all that cat hair. And I used on the back, I used a layer cake. It was the, the sweet water fabric again, I used on the back to match. And it's bound as well. Now, the reason I'm showing you this, because it's got the stars, the eight pointed stars on it as well. If I can find it, I'll link it below, okay? Um, but it's if you look for Moda Bake Shop, Wish Upon a Star, you'll find it. It's a free pattern on the Moda Bake Shop site. But the reason I'm showing you this one today is because I've got a wee leftover pack. Now, there's a lot of fabric here. Every quilt I make, I end up with leftovers like this, and I don't like throwing them out. If I know somebody I can give them to, I'll take them into maybe one of my classes or things like that. And I used to take a lot of stuff into my craft group when that was running. But obviously nobody's going anywhere just now. So these have been lying about for a couple of years. I'm not going to use them. And what I was thinking was, I mean, these bits here, that's, they're about five inches by ten inches. They're a good size. There's a couple of those. Actually, there's a wee bundle of those. These are strips that came off the... I used a layer cake, 10 inch squares for my backing and pieced them together. So there's a few half bits of those. You've got strips as well. You've got off cuts that's come off another side. So there's a lot of fabric here that can be used up. See if you wanted to try paper piecing and you wanted to cut up some hexagons. These would be great. Because sometimes if you're anything like me, you end up with dozens of hobbies that you want to try and you think, oh, I've got enough stuff. But maybe you could use these and make these into something. As I say, cut them into hexagons. But there's lots of strips there. There's lots of... That's actually five inch squares. That's from from a charm pack. I did have a charm pack and a layer cake of this. Back again. Sorry, my camera card was full. I've waffled on for 75 minutes. I'm really going to have to cut that down because you don't want to listen to all that. Anyway, there's some red here as well. There's plenty of red. There's actually some red that was left over from my binding as well from this wee scrap pack bundle. Plenty of red. And then there's this one here. I think I was talking about this one. This is from a different sweet water range from the, the quilt that I made, but it still goes. It still matches really well. So I'm going to put that in. There's some really nice wee sayings on this one. It says things like, um, learn to knit, make a quilt for each of my children, um, write a book, get rid of clutter, that's what you're helping me do, um, smile more, have fun. There's just some really nice wee sayings on this one, so I'm going to pop it in. It was a different Sweetwater quilt that I made, but I'll put that in as well. And I think this one here with the swirls on it, that was from that other Sweetwater range too, but there's a good chunk of that as well. There's a width of fabric like this. So you get plenty of hexagons out of this if you wanted to try some paper piecing. Just go onto Pinterest and find somewhere that lets you download hexagons, print them off, cut them out, make yourself a wee template and you could cut all this up. There's 200 grams of this fabric here. And I just weighed, while I was waiting for the stuff to come off my card, I weighed a metre of fabric and a metre of fabric weighs 175 grams. This is 200 grams. So there's over a metre of fabric here. I think I said it was only a few years ago I made this quilt. It was actually six years ago. I just found the label on the back. And it was made for Federation show in 2014. How did that, how did, how was it 2014? Well, there you go. 
Right, and I've got one last little quilt to share with you. Just your balance there. Okay, and it's this one over here. And again, I've got another scrap pack to give, to give away. Okay, this is just lots of hexagons put together. It actually sat, and I used to have a glass coffee table. And then it was a glass coffee table, but it was a drawer underneath. So I like to line my drawers with some nice quilts. And this just fitted in there nicely. This fabric's called, I think it's Anali. And it's by Dashwood Studios. This was their second fabric range. It's very autumnal, isn't it? The colour, the colours. And the back of it. It's just pe past a patchwork piece. But this was lots and lots of hexagons that I cut out and paper pieced together. I had lots of fun doing this. I actually bought this fabric to make a bag. It was called a dilly bag. It's like an around bottom bag with a drawstring at the top. Um, it was an Australian pattern designer, but then somebody sent me the same bag in a swap and the one that she sent me was much better than the one I was planning on making, so I didn't make the one that I planned on and I made this table runner instead. Sorry, well it is a table runner, you could use it on your table, couldn't you? It just hangs downstairs, that's why it's on a wee hanger. Just, But again, I've got another scrap pack of this fabric. If anybody could use this, sorry. Crinkle, crinkle. So if anybody can use this, you're welcome to this. There's actually bigger pieces in this one. There's less fabric, it weighs less, but there's bigger. There are bigger pieces. So there's quite a bit of the grey. That's folded over again as well. And that's the smallest piece, because I had to buy more to piece the back. I had to, I had to. And then there's a yellow piece. The leaves. A piece of the stripy grey, the green, it is, it's called an alley, there it's there. And then there's more of the brown, I think that's the one I've got the most of. But there's plenty there if you wanted to cut that up and do yourself a little paper piecing project. There's actually a website, paperpieces.com, it's an American site, and they actually, <coughs> excuse me, and they actually, um, publish lots of layouts so you don't have to stick to flowers if you do your hexagons you can turn it into diamonds and things like that as well or if you're quite clever on the computer and you can lay out your own designs you could do something like this this is actually diamonds but the three diamonds make a hexagon shape I mean that there is just a hexagon but there's three diamonds in it I made this one for the SEC a couple of years ago. I think it was last March actually. It was in the 2014. And it's supposed to be, it's, a, it's an old computer game that my husband likes. Is it Cubert? It's called. And he bops about on these so the lights on the top change colour where he's been. And I keep meaning to buy him a wee pin badge if I can find a Cubert pin badge and pin it on. I've not done that yet. But I laid that all out in the computer. I just drew it in the computer and then printed it out and cut the diamonds up and then started stitching all, wrapping it in fabric and stitching it all back together. So that was one that I did myself. And that went on display at the SEC a couple of years ago. I'll put a link below to the paperpieces.com site where they show you all the different layouts that you can make with hexagons and you would be able to download something somewhere. You don't have to, you don't have to buy your papers on your templates. You can make your own. Okay. So that's another wee scrap pack and there's other wee bits and other wee bits and lengths in there as well. Okay. That one only weighs 170 grams, so that's just under a metre. And I think that is just about all I've got to share with you today. One more thing, see while I was waiting for my camera card to empty, my daughter had a delivery. This is a little house for our gecko, one of our geckos. How cute is that? So the wee gecko hides in there. A wee gecko hide. This is from a company called Reptile Mansions, but she just showed me that there as I was waiting for my card to clear. And I thought, I'm going to show that in my vlog. How cool is that? They've got wee Harry Potter houses as well. They've got Hagrid's hut and they've got Hobbit houses. But it's really good, isn't it? Anyway, I think that is all I've got to share with you today. I think I've talked to you. I've talked at you enough today, haven't I? You'll all be needing a cup of tea. They maybe warned you about that at the start. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you all in a couple of weeks. Bye.